Yeah, no audio, or else it's on. Thing. Is it separate for each room that thermostats? Uh, I don't think so. It's just in here, but it like for some reason it'll it just resets itself. So this is the third time today I've set oh, it. Oh wow! So is this like an automatic override thing? Hi, Dick. Hi, Serge. How are you? Quite fine. What about you? Oh, doing pretty well. Yeah. Glad to see you here. Sorry? I'm glad to see you. Oh. 
Never seen. It's, late. it's, it's getting very... pretty late. <laughs> yes, but on Wednesday, it's still later <laughs> because it's a half hour later. Oh, yeah, yeah, true. But it's okay true. with me. There is no problem. Uh -huh. You don't get up early in the morning? I would rather say that I sleep a few hours and when I am tired, I am uh, I'm having a nap in the afternoon. <laughs> yeah, but I think that's the natural way. Maybe. You know, mm. I do that. <laughs> I'm getting older. <laughs> yeah. I have the same feelings. So this is a slightly different practice than we do on Wednesday. This is not the same, but what is the text? The text is the uh, uh, the one that was uh, handed out at the Kala Chakra, Jonan. Did you get that one, a PDF of it? Uh, probably, probably. Um, it's it. called, let me see here. It is called, um, oh, I don't know what the PDF is called. Hi, Serge. Hi, Dirk. Hi, Mary. Hi, Marie. Well, anyway, if I don't have the text, I will just listen to the lemma. <laughs> to I think lemma. somebody will be able to uh, uh -huh. yes, show it you. also. I made an electronic version, but I don't know if Lama likes it or not. So. I sent it to him, but he didn't respond, so I don't know. So we'll see. I made one that's made for the screen. Mm -hmm. yeah, possible. <clears throat> My PDF is called Kala Chakra Practice from Dana. Yeah, no. I'm going to just to make a research on my computer. Genog. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no, I don't have the text. This is a problem also. Well, I will see if I can uh, upload the text and share a link to it. Um, mm -hmm. Thank you.
Okay, I shared a link. I shared the text out of my Google Drive, so should be able to get it through that link that I just put in. Chat. Thank you, dear. You're welcome. <laughs> Someone help me. Yeah, good afternoon. So this has been our day of Dharma. So I was here at eight o'clock and probably go home at five. So this is my Dharma retreat, I call it. <laughs> Before we do the our reading through the text, I'd like to say a few things about Kala Chakra. <clears throat> 
The context and what we bring to it is enormously important. So uh, if we're just doing, uh, we don't know about the history of Kala Chakra, uh, the meaning, the mythology, Shambhala, um, it'd be, and we're just kind of trying to do the mantra or, or do the visualization of, uh, in this case, a, a very simple Kala Chakra, then it'd be kind of like asking someone to visualize Santa Claus, but they don't know anything about Christmas. You know, or when if we were in another culture and they said, okay, this is our this holiday, and we have no idea what the holiday means to anybody. We didn't grow, you know, if you go somewhere else and they say, this is this thing, we're celebrating this special day, and then or history, then it, it, it doesn't mean anything to us. So, particularly with Kala Chakra. Uh, the context, uh, who we're practicing with, uh, the state of the world, the state of our situation, our age, you know, our, is, is huge, right? That's like the context. And then what we bring to it, uh, like every other uh, training and practice, is huge too. So the motivation we bring, the understanding we bring. <clears throat> Is the sound okay with everybody? Yeah, so good, getting some thumbs up. Yeah. Um. <clears throat> so some people listening and some people here have received Kala Chakra a number of different times, maybe the full empowerment, uh, maybe uh, a Jainang or two Jainangs from Jada Rinpoche or other teachers, uh, Kentro Rinpoche um, from the Jonang tradition, and maybe Pena Rinpoche, Mingma in the past, or Dingo Kensei Rinpoche was very into Kala Chakra too. So uh, we, we have a Rime open approach, meaning if you've done authentic practice, uh, it's going to uh, be with a particular place and a particular teacher with a particular motivation. That's context and what we bring to it. Uh, so uh, here our uh, particular practice is received from uh, Jada Rinpoche and um, we're happy to uh, have people here that have taken the you know, full Kala Chakra impairment, of course, too. Jainang generally, uh, means, um, as Rinpoche explained, uh, it means that you've already had a highest yoga empowerment, or uh, hopefully of the same, so like Kala Chakra, or at least highest yoga empowerment, like Chakra Zambara, or Guya Samaja, or Guya Garba, something like that. Uh, and then the Jainang is to further, you know, kind of, uh, add to it and revive it and refresh it, right? So um, if we haven't had the full impairment yet, uh, create the aspiration uh, to get it, right? <clears throat> um, I'm constantly creating the aspiration to uh, have, of course, Dada Ramshe come to Sacramento and give the full on, the full empowerment, which traditionally is like, um, like a 10 day event, right, with um, dances and purifications and talks and sand mandala and the whole thing. So um, uh, I think uh, we could do it. Maybe, maybe not 2022, but maybe, you know, 2023. We, we, each year we've gotten, in spite of the pandemic, um, uh, more sophisticated, right? And we work together well. Everyone worked together really well um, for uh, the mandala that Jada Rimshe created uh, several weeks ago. So uh, for me, that was the uh, that was the real bliss experience. Like, oh, um, everyone is manifesting interdependence, right? That that was the best experience. Um, uh, um, I was delighted and. 
uh, I know Jada Rimshe, Geshe Tashi, and uh, everybody had a, a really good experience, and we, we helped create that. So thank you to, for everybody. <clears throat> so part of doing the sadhana now is we want to create further causes and conditions uh, to do more of the practice, to uh, enhance the activities of uh, the Kala Chakra masters that are alive now, right? So they're not very many, I don't think. So uh, that's part of what we're bringing to it. So it isn't just like, well, we've got we've got our <laughs> we've got our place now. So uh, that's it. Uh, we uh, we should also say we we want to expand our vision too. So who's ever Dorje Kasang, our ghost has come in the door. So. Uh, <laughs> We have we have our spontaneous door opens. Yeah, thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, for me, Kalachaka is more than just an individual uh, practice. It means something that uh, we're meant to practice as a large community around uh, the world, or even on other planets, right? Or Shambhala too. <clears throat> So it's uh, my wish that we extend our uh, network as far as possible and appreciate the investment time we've put into our uh, IT and audiovisual. And uh, we, we need uh, to get more training and uh, perhaps more, a little bit more um, hardware in the future. So I wanna have a really good experience so everything can be recorded and people can hear us. Um, remotely too, right? So that, that actually goes into the sadhana too. Uh, the idea with a major tantra like this is you, you put all your aspirations into it. It isn't just like uh, all the positive aspirations, ultimate and relative, go into it. It's not just like, well, I just want to use it to get enlightened or see absolute nature mind. Also, want it for everyone to uh, have good health. I want our pets to have good health, right? I want to have, you know, their crops go well and the planets revolve correctly. So Kala Chakra is like, just put everything, all these realizations, aspirations, uh, all together, right? So that it's not split up. Usually the wants and aspirations are very much you know, segmented, right? So they lose their power that way. We have want over here, desire here, like I need to fix my house, that's what energy over there. I need to help sentient beings. I need to do political action. I need to, you know, get at the club and exercise. Those are all like kind of dispersed. So in Kala Chakra, they're all coordinated together. That's one reason the mandala is so uh, complex because real life is complex. That part's not going away. What is hopefully going away as a result of doing this tantra is that the, the scattered chaotic part of it is going away. The feeling of I'm overwhelmed by the world just because it's so diverse and so um, complicated or I'm overwhelmed by the world because it's too complicated, diverse, and people are arguing and the planet's dying, so I give up. So with Kala Chakra, we're, we're saying, no, the world's not overwhelming me. I know people are fighting. I know the planet is um, at risk, but I'm still putting out the, the same amount of aspiration uh, on no matter what. That's going into this short sadhana. So, uh, if uh, if we're having technical problems, then uh, eventually uh, I do eventually want to know about it. So, you know, maybe Dana can jump up and say, "Hey, pay attention to this" or something, um, just so you know. Um, uh, I'd like to draw just uh, attention to. I believe, like in the last day or two. Uh, uh, Bishop Desmond Tutu passed away, and uh, he was uh, 
amazing person. I didn't get a chance to meet him, but um, he, he was a friend of Dalai Lama's. Um, and they wrote a book together. I can't remember. Didn't have joy in the title? Well, was book of joy, yeah. So, um, you know, I recommend that. Um, I, I think, you know, Bishop Tutu and, and Dalai Lama, you know, uh, are doing the Kalachakra practice by developing rich inner life, but also working directly with conflict and social justice and, you know, with, with a great sense of humor plus developing just a warm friendship. I have a feeling that even though the Dalai Lama has, uh, you know, many people he's friendly with and feels close to, there weren't that many people like Desmond Tutu that could, you know, kind of be kind of an equal and joke with him and get him laughing and get him at, you know, just kind of be just mano y mano. I, I think that was very unique like that. Um, you watch some of the interactions uh, or Bishop Tudo would just be uninhibited, not like worried, like, oh, Dalai Lama, I have to be worried not to step on his feet, you know, just completely spontaneous, don't you think? So that kind of energy, uh, we also have to bring into the sadhana, where uh, we do bring in uh, that quality of sense of humor and uh, the quality of uh, social action and social justice particularly. So uh, the Kala Chakra practice is not strictly an introverted practice where we'll just say, I'll get enlightened and the rest of the world's uh, going down. No, it's, it's, very, it's very much an extroverted practice that does at the same time has a rich inner world. So we, we want to bring that into uh, the Kala Chakra practice. Because when the initiation is given by uh, teachers, uh, they generally, Dalai Lama says Kala Chakra for world peace. It doesn't say Kala Chakra for only your peace <laughs> or just my country or city's peace. It just literally means it. And I, I think um, Dalai Lama and Desmond Tudo and, and uh, uh, Thich Nhat Hanh are, you know, so even though Thich Nhat Hanh or Desmond Tutu, like not doing this formal sadhana, that means, uh, that doesn't mean they're not, in a sense, doing the Kala Chakra vision, right? So Kala Chakra is so big that uh, we don't have to say like, well, you're, you're Buddhist or you're not Buddhist, or you know, there's only enlightenment is only, or realization is only for people with that identify themselves in a certain way, right? There's, there's no, there's no sign post on nature, mind, or reality, dhammata, that says this is uh, closed, right? That's important, like that. So that's one reason we, may, you know, particularly Dalai Lamas want to make Kala Chakra completely open, just like. Uh, you know, shamatha is completely open. But at the same time, I wanted to make sure that people have correct teachings about Kala Chakra. So when we say, I want people to have the Jainang or the Imparameter come to these teachings, it isn't to exclude anybody. It's so we can have, please come, but get the right teachings. Just like I want people, all the world to do shamatha, but then get the right teachings. So that makes sense, right? Okay. So uh, we have time now to run through the sadhana, but after and doing the uh, after the man, uh, mantra, we're we're going to do some uh, Mahamudra. All right. <laughs> um, so, <clears throat> what is Mahamudra? <clears throat> uh, Mahamudra is. Uh, uh, Know, sometimes translated as great seal, uh, meaning like everything is sealed in a certain way. Everything is one taste. Everything uh, exists uh, as this empty, open, luminous awareness, right? 
there's, there's nowhere you can look where it's uh, not available. There's no place where you can say, well, this is where uh, luminous open awareness stops. You can't find the origin and you can't find the end. Because you can't find the origin or you can't find the end, uh, we, we don't have to uh, <clears throat> ultimately search for it, do we? However, but because we're uh, caught sometimes, right? We think we're somewhere else and it's somewhere else. We do have to go through the path of looking. So in our Mahamudra practice, uh, we could say just, just rest in nature of awareness uh, and don't make anything, right? So from a very fruition point of view, we could say that. No need to do anything, just be awake. Don't even think of it as meditation, just like, just what more could be improved, right? But from a path point of view, sometimes we have to look for something deeply until we realize we don't have to look. It's a little bit like Wizard of Oz style, okay? Sometimes we have to like, uh, think like, well, it feels like, it, it should feel like I could just rest in nature awareness and that's enough, but there's still some doubts. So if there's still doubts, we have to resolve them. Look until you're convinced that even when you keep looking with uh, this knowing mind, you're not going to find mind as an object. You're not going to find self as an object. You're not going to find phenomena as an object. We have to be convinced, not just hearing it, but actually do it. Then we can be like quite certain. But uh, we can have, even before we have being on the path, and even before uh, we have uh, direct contact with nature of mind, uh, we can still have our confidence and faith, right? We know that other Dharma practices we have done have worked. We know that we have uh, done a lot on the practice. So we can have faith in just the ground. So no matter what our present experience is, uh, we can have faith that there, our experience is still our experience, isn't it? So uh, even when we're lost in thoughts, there is always uh, uh, an island of sanity in the midst of the chaos. And, and the ground, uh, that island is actually quite big and cannot be destroyed. Yeah, so we say it's Vajra and um, Dzogchen, it's uh, indestructible, right? It has sp uh, spontaneous presence. Usually we say like, um, Tarag, which is like um, perfect, nothing needs to be added or subtracted. And then there's um, a spontaneous presence, right? Like that. So even hearing the words, we can take some faith that, oh, that's the way things really are. We may not be able to see it directly or experience it directly now, but uh, we'll take that as the ground, okay? So we're gonna do, uh, go through the sadhana, but the, the point of the sadhana is to develop the Vajra pride to appear as we need to appear for sentient beings and the Vajra pride to identify directly with the nature of mind or awareness. Isn't that so? So the generation stage is, uh, you know, let's generate as we need to generate. Sometimes we need to generate as mother or father or nurse, or doctor, or therapist, or massage therapist, or you know, poet. <clears throat> so uh, that we can manifest very strongly and with uh, Vajra pride, and also we can manifest directly as nature awareness. Don't you think? So, as I said earlier in the day, it, it's just like this. <laughs> All right. Let's start because we don't have lots of time. Mm. So I'll read it out, you know, like people don't have to read it out, but you can. Namo Guru Kalachakraya. 
Those who wish to actualize the empty form, great seal, in this lifetime should carry out the six preparatory practices and so forth in a place that is agreeable to the mind, visualize well the objects of refuge, and earnestly go for refuge and generate the altruistic intention to become enlightened. With the faith of great clarity, I go for refuge to the Buddha, the master from whom supreme initiation has been obtained, to the doctrine of inseparable method and wisdom taught by him, and the two types of aspirants to virtue residing in that. With the faith of great clarity, I go for refuge to the Buddha, the master from whom supreme initiation has been obtained, to the doctrine of inseparable method and wisdom taught by him, and to the two types of aspirants to virtue residing in that. With the faith of great clarity, I go for refuge to the Buddha, the master from whom supreme initiation has been obtained, to the doctrine of inseparable method and wisdom taught by him, and to the two types of aspirants to virtue residing in that. <clears throat> I offer myself in all ways to the gurus, buddhas, and bodhisattvas, highest recipient of offerings, keep me as your servant and subject. My virtues of the three times, unsullied by the stains of concern for my own welfare, I dedicate as causes for enlightenment for every sentient being of the three worlds. <clears throat> From now until enlightenment, I will generate the mind of enlightenment. I will generate the pure attitude and abandon the conception of I and mine. From now until enlightenment, I will generate the mind of enlightenment. I will generate the pure attitude. I will abandon the conception of I and mine. From now until enlightenment, I will generate the mind of enlightenment. I will generate the pure attitude and abandon the conception of I and mine. On the broad divine path, extinguished of all material phenomena, is a lotus, moon, sun, rahu, and kalagni seats. On them is my root guru, composite of all the Buddhas of the three times, the glorious Kalachakra. He has one face and two arms. The color of his body is like the radiance of the sky. He holds the Vajran bell and embraces Vishmata. Vishmata's innate joy and unceasing empty form, method and wisdom, is of one taste. Vishwamata is yellow, and with a curved knife and skull cup, she uproots especially all darkness of confusion and ignorance. And with great bliss, she bestows virtue and goodness on all sentient beings. Kalachakra's outstretched right red leg and bent white leg tramples on Mara and Rudra. The Bhagwan's body is adorned with many ornaments with perfect measurements, such as Vajras and jewels, and is resplendent with light. Vajravekas are emanated from his heart, and they draw on the wisdom beings who merge with the commitment beings. The initiation deities are invited, and due to supplicating them, the initiation deities confer initiation, and Kalachakra and Vishwamata are seal impressed with the Lord of the lineage. I worship the Guru, composite of all three refuges, with clouds of common and uncommon offerings, mere enjoyments, outer, inner, and secret, that fill the expanse of infinite space. May Guru Kalachakra please bestow the seven initiations that plant the seed for the generation stage, the high and greatly high initiations that plant the imprints for the six branch yoga. <clears throat> the great Vajra Master Lord initiation that plants the imprint of the empty form great seal. Having heard this supplication from the heart of the Guru deity or admitted initiation deities, the assembly of Shaktis, One's gone to bliss, the king of wrathful ones, and so forth, who fill the expanse of space. They confer the seven initiations in the pattern of childhood, the four high initiations, the four greatly high initiations, and also the supreme initiation, the great Vajra Master initiation. By the power of these initiations, my channels and winds are made serviceable. Due to the strong imprints of the two stages planted in my mind stream, I become fortunate to actualize in this lifetime the great seal. Then recite the verse of supplication as many times as possible, followed by the Guru's name mantra. Uh, this is the Dalai Lama's name mantra, by the way. So, Guru Primordial Buddha, Kalachakra, please bless me into magnificence. Please quickly confer the cities. Please quickly bring down a great rain of all that is desired. 
Om Aguru Vajidara Bhattaraka Manjushya Vakindra Samadha Jana Sasana Dara Samadha Shri Bhajal Sarvasini Om Aguru Vajidara Bhattaraka Manjushya Vakindra Samadha Jana Sasana Dara Samadha Shri Bhajal Sarvasini Om Aguru Vajidara Bhattaraka Manjushya Vakindra Samadha Jana Sasana Dara Samadha Shri Bhajal Sarvasini Oh my guru of the suffer of the rock and just begin us to man jana sashan dar samadhi shibhadra sarasiddhi Patty, could you turn down the heat a little bit? You need to be so hot. <clears throat> then uh, we have uh, the mantra recitation. We'll do a uh, hundred. <clears throat> Oh ma ho 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 Oh Oh, wow. Hmm. Hmm. Oh, my hung, oh, I'm so my lord, oh, pay. Oh, pray, we should not hung, pay, oh, pray, we No problems.
We'll pray we respond not to Hong Pei. Daddy, can you turn down the lights on the stage, please? Thank you. So, uh, we have like 18 minutes to, to sit. So, mm -hmm. nice being quiet. You could just turn those off. Maybe just off, off, just everything off. Thank you.
か。うん<笑>いや。Imagine a stream of nectar flows from the body of Guru, father, mother, and enters through your crown, filling your entire body. All your negativities and obscurations are cleansed and purified. <clears throat> Needs a little. Yeah, okay. Oh. Okay. Oh. You can push it up all the way, maybe. You push it. There you go. Yeah. Do this virtue may quickly become called chakra and place all transmigratory beings without exception in that state. Mm -hmm. Very good. So uh, in our um, Mahamudra or Dzogchen practice, uh, uh, you know the the emphasis always uh, is on knowing, right? So we can say uh, the nature of ground, nature reality, dharma is like that. This is the nature of the uh, you know purified alia jhana, so forth. But uh, the emphasis has to be on our knowing it, right? Our seeing it. So. <clears throat> To make it very simple, uh, you know, we we have to look. We have to like look. So looking in this case isn't the kind of analytic investigation um, uh, that we learn uh, in logic. Um, that that's important, but this is directly looking into something. So when there are doubts or when there's uh, cognitions of any kind, and then when their emotions are, uh, we are aware of them directly. We look through them, so to speak. So we look directly at the anger, directly at the confusion, directly at the desire, directly at the jealousy, directly uh, uh, whatever we need. So when there's a phenomena, uh, whether it be cognitive phenomena, emotional, physical, uh, we say we look directly into it through it. When you look directly and stay with it with a balanced mind, uh, unwavering, which we've developed through long hours of meditation, right? <laughs> then we find uh, there's uh, no solidity there, right? Everything uh, manifests as uh, open awareness. When the open awareness dawns, then you rest there, okay? Stop selling. <laughs> but when there's a phenomena um, uh, at this point in our uh, path aspect, then look at it directly, look through it. You don't look at it as solid, you look through it, right? You look into it, uh, you experience it directly until, um, the open awareness or just uh, pure knowing manifests. But when you're there, rest, right? Stop selling. <laughs> like that. Don't worry, uh, you'll have to come back down the mountain. <laughs> so uh, at some point later, I'll go into Garab Dorji's three points. Um, because uh, phenomena will appear again, of course, but uh, we see phenomena arising as the nature of awareness, don't we? And we're not confused. <laughs> but we have to repeat it over again. So this has been uh, a short sadhana that has a lot behind it that we can go into more textual detail later, but um, I want to emphasize for... Uh, yogis, uh, the sitting practice, whether we call it sitting, shikantaza, or Dzogchen, or Mahamudra, just sitting, is essential. All the great yogis spend a lot of time just sitting and looking and being with and resting, right? Investigating our pure experience until they see absolute nature of mind and nature of self and nature of reality, right? 
So the sadhanas are wonderful and the prayers and mantras are wonderful, but the most important thing is to see uh, our own true face, right? <clears throat> so sometimes we say, um, you know, uh, Yeshe, which is the Tibetan for, for jhana, like knowledge comes like jhana, gnosis, knowledge, like jhana, you know, sometimes translated as pure consciousness, right? Sometimes we translate that as wisdom, sometimes awareness. Uh, we say also the word rigpa, which is um, Tibetan for vidya. Vidya definitely has a sense of like seeing, right? Seeing and knowing. So even though the nature of the ground is always there, we actually have to see into our nature. So uh, we must have this uh, direct seeing. We have to kind of get it, right? We have to get it experientially. So um, it'd be nice, uh, you know, for everyone here and listening uh, to be uh, a Rigzin, right? A Vidyadra. Wouldn't that be nice? So when we say holding, holding the view, not not wavering from the view, right? So <clears throat> uh, I'm going to take a break and then I'm going to go through some Salang practice and then also going to start introducing uh, the six uh, Kala Chakra Yogas. So we do that in the uh, dojo part of the temple and right now we don't um, have a camera for that, uh, but I'd like to start um, you know, sharing or broadcasting that. Uh, we don't have that set up, but maybe we can make an aspiration to have that. So for those that can't attend the Salong and uh, yoga practices, um, we can transmit it. What do you think? <laughs> Eli's going, yay, okay. <laughs> I don't know if we're up for that today, but uh, I want to make that commitment to uh, people, right? So the um, Salang and uh, yoga practices are definitely very intimate and tend to be kind of secret in a way, right? So um, they're not, uh, some of them may look like the uh, yoga practices that we have, you know, storefront yoga, right? That are public, but uh, they're traditionally meant to be um, for, for people that know each other and know the Lama and are uh, uh, very intimate, to use that word, right? So I'm looking forward to, to sharing that, but um, I'm not sure right now whether um, I want to just uh, uh, put that on uh, uh, YouTube yet, you know? So I don't, I'm not ready to do that. My, I don't know, I guess people could, I don't know, I don't know how it works, but, uh, you know, the, the teachings somehow need to be kept a little bit fresh, right? I will work on that. <clears throat> so I'd like to encourage people to um, attend and participate in uh, uh, the New Year's practice that uh, Dirk is leading. So uh, very thrilled that he's doing that. That's the way to start out. I mean, dear, I don't think you have to be there the full time, right, Dirk? <laughs> okay, someone is trying to get my attention. So how do we do that? I bet you don't have to be there the full time, right? No, uh, you can come anytime between nine and five. Yeah. And also on the yeah. Lions Road Dharma Center website, if you go there, you can sign up to volunteer to um, lead one of the hours. And um, that's really a really great experience to be able to practice that way. So I just wanted to mention, because I didn't emphasize that enough about going to the website to, to get a, um, a it's like a volunteer form that you can, there's a link there for yeah. easy to find. Well, um, uh, I'd like to uh, extend a happy new year to people. It's gonna be a good year.
Yes. Yeah. Okay. So, um, uh, I myself uh, uh, do Kala Chakra practice and uh, Vajragini practice, and uh, I'm, of course, ready to start up doing the uh, um, Buddha Dharma study program again. Um, I tried to say I'm doing uh, Dzogchen practice too, but I wouldn't say in front of anybody, my teacher, Sama Dzogchenpa, I would just say, I'm trying to be more patient. <laughs> but uh, um, on my own side, uh, uh, I'm reading and would like to give more teachings on Nipam's Beacon of Certainty. Um, so uh, maybe that's something I can work out with uh, Dirk in the coming year, like that. So uh, Nipam was a very interesting person who uh, um, was very interested in uh, harmonizing the Mahamadhyamaka view with the Dzogchen view, you know, quite something really, right? So um, I like to think he was largely successful. What do you think, Dirk? I, I think so. Can you hear me? I think he was very successful, but yeah. I don't know if you can hear me. All right, now I can hear you a little bit. Oh, you can. Yeah. Yeah. I, well, you know, I love Mipam, so <laughs> I have to say I think he was very successful. <laughs> yeah. So uh, it's very advanced teachings, you know. So it's like uh, golden nectar. So we'll work on that together, and there might be some other people that could join us. We'll see. Okay. Well, Dan and I, Dan and I both uh, started out sort of with those teachings, so. <laughs> <laughs> I think we were both in over our heads at the beginning, but it seems like a good time now, maybe. <laughs> yeah, let's do it. Okay. Good to see you, Dan. Thank you, Dirk. All right. Ciao. Thank you, Lama.